Friends, fellows, countrymen, what you see here is the school creation screen from NCAA Football 2000 and a new series I'm calling Jayhawks Through Time. And that is the title I'm sticking with. I just said it on recording. Uh, I had to make the Rhode Island Rams the first team that the Jayhawks will be playing uh, in this 2016 season in the creative school mode. I put them on cupcake difficulty because from what I understand, from what I've done, the, the not a ton of research that I've done, but I've looked on um, some sites that say the, the KU is a little, a pretty big favorite in this game. Uh, somebody said 21 points. I've seen as much as like 28, 29. So, I mean, it's Vegas odds, it's betting, you know, there's going to be some fudging in there. And we don't really know, the season hasn't really started yet, but people say that KU should have a little bit of an advantage over this team, or a pretty big bit of advantage over this team. If you're a Rhode Island fan, I'm sorry, but that's uh, just the way that it looks. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that KU lives up to that this weekend. What I am doing here is uh, kind of combines two of my favorite things. It combines talking about the history of KU football, and uh, classic sports games. It's kind of like the perfect thing for me. I am going to play through, and this is a little bit difficult to, you know, so just bear with me here. Play through each game of the 2016 season, the week before it happens, in a different uh, college football video game. So this here is NCAA Football 2000 uh, by EA Sports. Most of these are going to be the EA games just because they were the ones doing it consistently. But there are, you know, the Game Breakers... Uh, Sega put out a couple, or, you know, there's a 2K2 and a 2K3, I think. And there were a couple on, like, Super Nintendo, too. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll have a pretty decent, you know, breadth of stuff. For now, we're going to start out in NCAA 2000, which isn't my favorite. Uh, this is my first time, this clip here is actually my first time ever playing the game, though, interestingly enough. And it does kind of highlight right here my least favorite part of these games, of this engine, really. And this is the Madden 99 engine. Uh, really, these set of two plays, I did not like the throwing meter, and I did not like the kicking meter. And both of those things, well, not the throwing meter, but just the, the throwing engine, basically. Passing in this game is not my favorite part of the game. Rhode Island's not very good. Uh, as I, I do feel kind of weird guilty about it, just because like, I made them, you know? But I, I'm trying to be as realistic as I can, and again, from what other people have told me, they're not good. I haven't like gone back and watched them because I'm not I'm not like that dedicated to finding that out. We go on the wheel route here and we score. That should have probably not been a touchdown because he does step out of bounds for a very brief moment <laughs> there around the ten or five yard line. But whatever, it's a game from 1999. It's flawed. That's what's going to happen sometimes. The defense absolutely smothers the running back right there. Does it again there? You see so many people just bouncing off of dive tackles here, which is. A relic of like Madden 92 style, you know, engine. Of the Madden 92 engine, kind of, that, that still sticks around. It's kind of surprising how long it took for them to get those sorts of things where players are just like kind of bouncing off each other, passing, you're either like just kind of just lightly throwing it or just chucking a bullet right in front of the receiver's face. Now, the option engine is the one thing that I think is actually very good in this game. Um, it's better than a 99. I will play 99 at some point. I really don't like 99. Uh, the reason I don't like it, I think, is just because it's ridiculously difficult. It's not... it doesn't even... like... <laughs> it's really an unfair level of difficulty. Tight end fumbles there, so we have to go out of bounds on third down. That would have been a first down if he hadn't fumbled it, but we do figure out the k kicking meter here, so it is 10 to 0 in, I believe, the second quarter, because my first quarter was basically a bunch of option runs, and it kind of stalled. That's about the unfortunate thing about a game like this, is that, like, when your drive stalls, it stalls hard. <laughs> and it's just like, well, I can't get anything going. And when it gets to third and ten in a game like this, and you really can't pass well, uh, you know, at least I can't. I haven't figured out the passing engine, unless there's some sort of trick to it that I'm not getting. They overthrow the receiver there, that would have been a pretty big game for them. And here, I, uh, on third down, we run uh, blitz all the way up the middle. We get about five guys on the quarterback. They're probably not good for him. Then I call a timeout with about seven seconds left. And this gives me the opportunity to talk about the man who is returning this punt, uh, again with the KU history. This is, I believe, Harrison Hill, who was a wide receiver, played at KU for, I think, six seasons. And so somehow, from like 98 to 2003 or something like that. Because he had injury issues near the end of his career. He had some sort of like dehydration problem. He runs it back, scores, touchdown right there. He was a fast guy, had good hands, great receiver. Um, uh, I read a book, 
and I kind of highlighted him for because they interviewed him him in the book, and it was like he was kind of projected to go somewhere in the NFL. People thought he had the talent to play professionally, and he just had a couple of health issues that unfortunately got to him. He was a really good, talented college player. The only issue is that he was he was in that NCAA 03 series I did last year. And for whatever reason, and it changes from game to game, his race. He was a white guy in, like, actual life. Still is, I assume. Um, that's a joke. But the game would put him, for, for whatever reason, would just get the, the race of the player wrong. And I know technically NCAA will tell you that it wasn't, you know, it, it was just a random series of coincidences that land each player looking almost, you know, how they're supposed to look in real life. But I just think that's a funny little thing that happened in some of some of these old games handoff here is to uh, an actual a guy who played in the nfl for a couple years the fullback number 33 moran norris uh who i think scored like crazy like eight or eight or nine touchdowns as a fullback and uh, they just give him the ball you know two or three yards away from the end zone and he would generally score for him he was a really good college fullback played in the nfl for a long time for the 49ers uh, houston texans he, you know, he was a, a good player he was never you know the star i don't think anybody was selling his jerseys or anything like that but he was a very good uh, tenured nfl player so it, it's kind of cool to see that he was one of the few guys during my life that was in the nfl from ku uh for a while that's of nate dewyer who was a uh, offensive lineman i think Oh, also, there's a weird series of coincidences here where I got called for a offensive holding on a made field goal, which I actually took on third and, like, 20. So I got to run another play, which failed, and then it was, like, fourth and 35 after another penalty. And so I had to kick, like, a 60-yard field goal, which I missed. Here my own hubris gets me. I run up the middle with the blitz, and they score. So it's 24-6. to six. They do go for the two-point conversion, because that would make it a three-possession game, which is slightly more doable but they don't get it. So it's 24 to six, and I'm pretty happy with that. We got two minutes and 45 seconds left, and I spend most of the rest of this video just kind of killing time, running the clock out, not trying to rub the, you know, the score into anybody's face, regardless of if it is a digital person or not. I just wanted to, you know, secure the win, and here I can talk about what I think about this upcoming season, and I think it'll be all right. I, it's not, I, I don't think it'll be a bowl game or anything like that. I think, Three wins is even a stretch. Uh, I think if they get to three wins, I would be very happy because after last season, uh, I know that if they were to get three wins after last season, it would be a big, it would be a triumph. Um, but really, the most important thing is just to win the first game, and I think they will. I have a belief that they will, and I think they'll be. You know, I think it'll it'll be better than last year, and that's really what we're looking for. Um, Insofar as the effort put out last year and how much how hard they tried last year, I was completely good with that. It's just getting the results this year. They looked like they were putting an effort last year, and I have no doubt that they were. But this year is going to be where they kind of need to start showing that on the field. But yeah, um, I'm excited for the season to start. I'm excited to do this. It gives me an opportunity to kind of, you know, talk about a couple of different things I know. And um, yeah, it'll be great. So, you know, as always, love yourself. Have yourself a great day. And I will see you next week against the Ohio Bobcats in some other game. I don't even know yet.